Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, I realize it's Monday and that usually means a Linux top five, but Solus 4.0 was released today. And so I wanna have a look at Solus instead of uh, our usual top five. So just a little adjustment to the schedule there. And uh, what we're gonna do is first have a look at Solus uh, website here. So this is at get Sol dot us is the url so you can come over here and get solace and uh, of course the 4.0 release is one that has been well anticipated for a long time in fact there was a 3.99 <laughs> release etc um, because what ended up happening is the original developer came into some uh, some personal issues and needed to step down from the project and the rest of the development team had to get everything ported over to their own systems and off of his personal things. And that's really what caused this delay. But this is a very anticipated release. And so I wanted to just have a quick look at it. So Solus is on my top five for new Linux users. There are definitely some ups and some downs to using Solus. Uh, we're gonna get into some of those today. Uh, but first let's go ahead and have a look at the release notes. So a lot of, one of the things that we, we major see right now is uh, just the number one is we have the Linux kernel 4.20 and that's actually means that it supports a lot of things uh, This has a, a higher support for your newer hardware uh, If you're running your you know your Ryzen uh, Series 2s and things like that that you needed a more recent kernel than my favorite Linux Mint has in it Then Solus is going to be a, a good good thing for you. A lot of the software is new um, and we also see just some basic multimedia upgrades. The software center has some minor refreshments involved in it. Um, they, uh, they did remove WPS office from the third parties due to the, uh, unenforceable EULA by the developers. That is why I have never been a fan of WPS office. So that's pretty cool. Uh, sad if you wanted to use WPS, but uh, that's what they wanted to do. So, of course, Budgie is their flagship. Uh, Budgie is written by the Solus team. And uh, this is the new 10X series. This is 10.5. And uh, it has the new GTK theme, which I think is pretty cool. It's a pure dark theme out of the box. So some people may or may not like that, but we'll have a look at it. Uh, we have the Budgie menu. We have caffeine. Uh, that's always been there, but we'll kind of highlight it. Uh, at least it's been there for a while anyway. Um Here's your icon lists, just basic stuff. Um, we'll kind of cover cover all that. The other thing that we have is we have a, uh, just what everything looks like. We have a GNOME version and a Mate version. These are available. And there apparently is a Plasma version that is in the works. So you guys that like Plasma will have a Solus Plasma version, according to the release notes here. So that's kind of cool. I uh, can't wait to see that, as that is one of my favorite desktop environments. So with that, let's go ahead and jump on over into the distribution itself and see what this guy looks like. So here we are on the desktop here, and uh, this is just installed, and I did not do anything. Well, actually, I tested installing a printer. That's kind of one of the downsides. We'll get to that in a little bit. But if you're new to Solus, let's just go ahead and do a little bit of a tour here. So we have a basic traditional panel, kind of set up very much like the Windows 10 panel. We have a simple menu over here. Uh, where we have access to all of the different categories that you're going to find. So these are the different tools that we have. And then we have a variety of different uh, pinned applications that you can use. On the other side, we have a clock, we have the power, we have the volume, the notification, we have um, the network status, and then the Raven menu is the thing that sets it apart. So Budgie is kind of like a combination of a Windows and a Mac <laughs> with regards to this panel here, which there is one of these similar panels on a Mac where you have applets, and these are various application things. So we have a calendar. Of course, if you're playing some multimedia, you have uh, you will actually see your multimedia and volume and sound controls. You will actually have, if you have a different variety of input and output devices, you will see those all here. Right now we have this one, but you will see an option to select what is the default input or output device on the system if you happen to have those. Notifications appear right on over here, so you can see where your notifications are. Now, we do not have desktop icons on this by default, but there is a settings panel uh, that will have your options for that. So this is your desktop settings. 
Uh, notice that there is a settings and there is a budgie desktop settings. Those are two separate things here. And so this will give us our basic styles. Um, before we dive into there too much, let's just go ahead and have a look at some of the theming of the site. So you can see it is a, like I said, a very dark theme. I like it, it's a nice theme, um, but a lot of people don't like necessarily work with the, the dark themes on everywhere. I know dark themes are kind of taking over the universe, um, but that's, you know, some people like them, some people don't. Uh, so it is not too uncommon to get operating systems shipped with a dark theme pre-installed. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to boot up some applications and see what that looks like because we have a dark theme setting over here. So uh, here's our Firefox and here is Rhythmbox, which is a uh, media controller. So you can see that everything here is set in and let's go ahead and pull this up. So you'll kind of see that the Rhythmbox is going to show up right here in your Raven menu now. So if you're playing a series of things, you can skip forward, you can play, you can pause. Um, and other settings inside there. And you can actually close it just by clicking on the X over there in the Raven menu. We're gonna keep that booted up though. I just wanna to wanna to do that for some testing here. So first thing is this guy here is we do have the light theme, dark theme adjustments. Uh, I'm not sure, I, I was thinking that would toggle what these things look like. Let me go ahead and boot that back up, see if that was what it is. So I'm not exactly sure what this toggle is going to do. Usually it has to do with some of the, the outlying framings, but I just haven't seen anything. We do have under our widgets, we do have here is kind of uh, a variety of different themes that you have to pick from um, out of the box. So here is a case where we have some darker on the top with the lighter in the middle. Uh, compact is just going to make things a little bit smaller. And then we can go with a similar theme to what we had, but the compact version. So we do have some nice themes out of the box. We have a few different uh, icon packs um, to pick from here. And let's just go back. So Papyrus is what our default was. So let's just go back to that one. Cursors, we just have two basic cursor themes. And then notification position, where are those going to be at? We have animations. We can turn them on, turn them off. That's just kind of uh, these guys here. Does this just kind of show up or does it just kind of animate up and down? So we have some nice settings in that. Now, um, under our desktop, we're just going to go ahead and minimize everything here. Under our desktop, this is where you can enable or disable desktop icons. So the enable versus disable is going to enable your ability to actually work off the desktop. So now we have right clicking, we get new folder and things like that. If you turn that off, notice that we only have change background displays and settings. So with that turned on, now you can enable things like your network servers, your home directory, your trash, your mounted volumes. Um, so now if you want to work off the desktop, you have that easy option from right inside of here. This is a very nice feature because like GNOME, which Budgie is based on, is doing away with desktop icons altogether. So it's great to see that uh, a system like Solus is coming out that still has all of these different uh, functionalities built in. Of course, here's our fonts. You can scale your fonts over here. So it'll kind of scale everything. So if you want to do your text scaling, you can do that. Then here we have our Raven menu. So this is, of course, our Raven menu is this guy on the side. That's called the Raven menu. And then this is where you can determine what shows up. So power strip, uh, show media, uh, playback controls. So of course, that's the playback controls over here. So if I disable that, in theory, I shouldn't see anything with the media over there. Uh, here's the microphone input, I mentioned that, and then there's calendar, and then display number of weeks, and then you can adjust your volume. All right, so we here we have our panel, and uh, this here we have our um, Raven trigger, we have our clock, we have our user indicator, status indicator, uh, system tray. So inside of your system tray, here's kind of one of the downsides that I see to Solus right away. Let's go ahead and dive into the downsides. One of these is uh, they've been tweaking and refining this almost in ways that I don't like one of these factors. You used to have at the bottom of the Raven menu an option here for your power options and your, uh, and your settings. And uh, that is no longer there. So I can't get to these desktop settings anymore just from going to the Raven menu. I have to go into the panel to look for them. The other factor is though, is that if I wanted to remove all of these applets, um, I can. <clears throat> 
And what I just did right there, if you noticed, is we no longer have a way to turn the computer off. <laughs> that is a widget on the bottom of the panel. And it is not in the menu like it is in most other systems. I haven't found an application in here. Maybe under, I think it's the accounts. I don't see it there. So it's possible to remove the power button to turn off the system. So right now, the only way to turn this thing off is actually to go into a terminal and uh, shut it down that way. Um, so that is one of the, hmm, maybe they took something a little bit too far. I think that's the user indicator. Is that the user indicator? Yeah, so that's the user indicator. Um, so if you remove the user indicator from the panel, you do not have a way to turn off the system anymore. In older versions, the Raven menu had the ability to power off the system from the menu itself. That's kind of one of your downsides. That's a weird downside, but hey, we're talking about some downsides here. Another one is... Uh, there is a smaller amount of software available. So if we pull this guy up, you will find a lot less software uh, than you will find in a variety of uh, of other um, a variety of other distributions. Now that's good in that there's not going to be a lot of junky software in here, but it's bad in that the um, you may not always find everything that you're needing. Now, they have remedied this by inclusion of Snap. So Snap is installed by default, although there are no Snap packages installed. I am not a huge advocate of Snap, so I'm, I kind of put that as maybe it's a positive and that it gives you access to the entire Snap library, but also maybe it's a negative because I would prefer to use stuff that's curated inside of your, uh, inside of your packages, not... Um, um, not uh, rely on the on the snap packages instead. Uh, the other factor is consider your printers. Um, so I went in here and I went ahead and attempted to install my printer. This is the correct printer, but this print driver, which is the default that it wants to use, does not work for this printer. Uh, you generally, I have found that there's a couple of distros that this printer will work with out of the box, but for the rest of them, you actually download the print drivers, which are made available from the manufacturer off their website, which works perfectly fine everywhere else. The problem is, is that you either have to support RPM or deb packages, and this supports neither and that I know of. Uh, maybe it does, maybe there's a way to get it to work, but that's not a simple method. Um, and of course, I focus here on this channel on the basic learning things of Linux. We don't want to say, oh, well, you can do it by doing this, 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 and this, and now it'll support Debs. It doesn't support Debs out of the box that I know of. Um, and so I can't install the print drivers for this and actually get a functioning printer. And I did boot this up. I booted up the printer and, and tested if I can print a document and it just sits there in the queue forever. Um, versus on a Debian based system, I can install the Deb drivers or on a uh, Fedora or an OpenSUSE, I can install the RPM drivers. Um, so not everything is going to work out of the box. Um, and so uh, with that being said, um, with that being said, uh, those are kind of some of the downsides. Now, on the upside, we do have a very clean, very modern system. Uh, we do support full online accounts. So here we are in a separate settings panel. This is one of those things I looked at before as a, as a separate thing is that there are two settings panels. Now, the reason there are two is because the one on the right over here is the GNOME settings panel. The one on the left is the budgie specific one. It'd be kind of neat though if they could figure out how to combine them together. And that is uh, that is is certainly uh, certainly a thing. All right. Um, and so it is very clean. It does support that kernel. Um, it does support that kernel 4.20. Uh, it's not telling me that right here, but it is on Linux kernel 4.2, uh, 4.20, which means that it does have the absolute latest kernel support. Um, and it is very light on the pre-installed applications, so we don't have a ton of extra stuff. Um, and that's, that kind of is kind of a benefit in that it gives you the option to install the types of software that you want. So uh, this is Solus. It is one of the ones that I do recommend. Um, it is uh, there's especially if you're more if you're a, uh, if you know a little bit more about computers um, than 
that's uh, it's a good system. It may be slightly different if you're just like you need a handhold on everything. This is probably going to be a little bit more advanced for you, but it's not super advanced. It is a very easy system to use. It works very well. There was an old snafu with it where updating it caused it to crash. That was an issue on uh, one particular version, which is now fixed. Um, just something to keep in mind. Uh, but overall, Solus has uh, always been a great distribution as, uh, as I've used it and as I've tested it. Uh, Budgie is a very good operating system, or is a very good desktop environment, I should say. Uh, Solus itself, I like it. So uh, this is my take on Solus 4.0. Have you had a look at it yet? And let me know what you think of Solus 4.0 in the comments down below. And don't forget to help support the channel. There's links up above where you can get some more information, how to support and how to find some merch. And don't forget to follow on the social media channels if you want to get some better updates without having to rely on the YouTube update system.